Welcome back. Today we're going on with the Lorex by Dr. Seuss. At the far end of the town, where the grickle grass grows, and the wind and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no bird ever sings except Old Crow, is the street of the li lifted Lorex. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood, just as long as it could, before someone lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax? And why was it there? And why, and was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town, where the grickle grass grove, the old once still lives there, Ask him, he knows. You won't see the onceler, don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkmer on top of the, his store. He lurks in his lurkmer, a uh, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of miff muffed moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of his shutters, and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorex was lifted away. He tells you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. <laughs> then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snoof, his secret strange hole in his gubulous glove then he grunts i will call you by whisper my phone for the secrets they tell you or for your ears alone slop down slops the whisper my phone to your ear and the old ones their whispers and not very clear since they have come down through a sn snurgly hose and he sounds as if he had a smallish bee up his nose. Now I tell you, he says with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back to the day when the grass was green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the Swimmy swans rang out in space. One morning I came to this glorious place, and I first saw the trees, the truffle trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffle trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees I saw brown barbaloots frisking around in their barbaloot suits as they played in the shade and ate truffle of fruits from the rippleless pond came the comfortable sound of the hum humming fish humming while splashing around but those trees those trees those truffle trees in my life i've been searching for those trees such as these the touch of their tufts was much softer than silk and they had this sweet smell of fresh buttermilk I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffle a tree with one shop. And with great skillful skills, with a great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a sneed. The instant I'd finished, I'd heard a gazump. I looked, and I saw something pop out of the stump. Of the tree I'd chopped down, it was sort of a man. Describe him, that's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. <laughs> hmm. 
Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorex. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongue. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffle a tuft? Look, Lorex, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a sneed. A sneed. A sneed finds something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorex said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is not one, no one on earth who would buy that fool sneed. <laughs> But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong, for just at that minute, a chap came along. And he thought that the sneed I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety-eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I said. I told him, shut up if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the once, the whole Lansford family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to the north niche. Turn it left, wee wah, sharp right and south stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wensler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting sneeds, just as busy as bees, to the sounding of the chopping of truffle trees. Then, oh boy, oh how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super X hacker, which whacked off four truffet trees at one smacker. We were making sneeds four times as fast as before, and the Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. <laughs> but the next week he knocked on my new office door, he snapped, I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, but you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots who play in the shade of their barbaloot suits and happily lived eating truffle fruits. Now, thanks to you, to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle fruit to go around. And my poor barbaloots are getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They loved living here. But I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope they, they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the onceler, felt sad as I watched them all go, but business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I mean no harm. I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered my loads. Of the sneeds I shipped out, I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more sneeds, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes when the old nuisance Lorex came back with more gripes. I am the Lorex, he coughed and he whiffled. He sneezed as he snuffled. He snarled. He sniffled. Once, Lur, he cried with a crumbful look. Once, Lur, you make such a smogulous smoke. My poor swarmy swams, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so please, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? 
I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smuggled up here. What's more, snapped the Lorex. His dander was up. Let me say a few words about Grumplity Glump. Your machine chugs on day and night without stop, making glumpity glump and sloppity slop. And what do you know with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old Lensler, Lensler man, you. You're glumping up the pond where the humming fish hum. No more can they hum for their gills are gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't too smeary. I hear things are just as bad up in Lake Erie. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorex. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say, bad, bad, bad. Well, I have my rights, sir. I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing what I do. And for your information, you Lorex, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more tough trees into thneeds, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an axe and a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle tree of them all. No more trees, no more needs, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me, waved me goodbye. They jumped into my car and drove away under the smoke-smuggled stars. Now all that was left neath the bad-smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance, and he lifted himself by the seat of his pants, and I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he hesitated, when he heisted himself and took leave of the place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorex left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the one word unless, whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That wasn't that was long, long ago, but each day since that day I've sat here and worried and worried away through the years while well, my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. <laughs> but now, says the onceler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorex seems perfectly clear unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better, it's not. So, Ketch calls the onceler. He lets something fall. It's a tuffless seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffless seeds, and trufflet trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new trufflet, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes and hacks. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. The End <laughs>